Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2.30 p.m. session in the Content and Community Track. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC14. This hour, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called New Association for Grid Owners. My name is Maria Korolov, and I'm the editor of Hypergrid Business and also run the Hyperica site in the Hyperport. I will be the moderator today. First, I would like to introduce you to Terry Ford, the founder of Third Rock Grid. He's also known as, in world as Butch Arnold. Third Rock Grid is one of the oldest grids running in OpenSim and is one of the 10 most popular grids as well. Terry's the one who originally came up with the idea for an association of OpenSim grid owners. Terry, can you please tell us a little bit, a bit about yourself and why you decided to start this association? Sure. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here with all of you today. So I look around, I see many people here I've already met and talked to over the years and others I've not yet had the pleasure to meet. Uh, many of you know me, but those of you who don't, my name is Butch Arnold. I'm the founder of Third Rock Grid. I live in Ohio, which is in the United States, if you don't know that. I hold a degree in computer programming. I've been an avid 3D Worlds fan since joining Second Life back in 2005. And uh, I first became interested in the OpenSim platform in December 2007. And uh, shortly thereafter, I placed the Third Rock Grid online for the first time in February 2008. And like many of you, I'm very interested in learning all I can about current upcoming OpenSim developments, as well as other similar technologies, and this conference seems to be the right place to do it. There sure are some exciting projects going on, and our beloved OpenSim platform continues to get better with each passing day. It truly seems to be a great time to be involved in 3D platforms as they continue to grow in popularity and function. I sometimes visit other grids and I talk to the owners and the admins. I see grid owners as partners in a sense as we're all trying to offer users a great experience built on top of the OpenSim platform. Some of them have different views, may cater to a different user base, etc. But we all share in the responsibility to present our users the best that OpenSim can offer. Oftentimes I believe grid owners see each other as competitors and to some extent, I believe this to be true. But the virtual world space is a very big place and the potential user base is huge, much larger than any of us has seen thus far. As the, uh, the number of open sim users and worlds continue to grow, I believe our responsibilities as grid owners also increases. I believe one of these uh, responsibilities is to make sure that none of our worlds give OpenSim a bad name. I'd like to submit to you that each instance of OpenSim should be seen as a link in the chain of virtual worlds, and that this chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Sharing some of our knowledge back to the community can and will help to strengthen our, and our entire community. As our platform continues to evolve with new features, and better stability, and more content, I think it will become increasingly attractive to new users and the community will continue to grow, creating new and unforeseen possibilities for all of us. I also believe there's much room for grid owners to collaborate on events and projects which help to bring our community together. An example of this might be the uh, annual Robstock event that we hold on the Third Rock Grid each April. This event was created by Jim St. Clair, which many of you might know is Lazuli Paraka in our grid. The purpose of that event is simply to act as a fundraiser for the Doctors Without Borders charity. The event's simple. We bring entertainers into the grids, they play music, they sing, etc. And all the tips they receive during the event get converted to real dollars, and then we give it back to the charity. Uh, for the past few years, this has become a multiple grid event spanning Third Rock Grid, Second Life, and others. Last year, we were happy that Metropolis joined us, and uh, each year, the amount of money that we raise continues to be a substantial amount. Anyway, the point is, 
is that there's many opportunities for grids to collaborate if provided the means to do it. I think that's the important thing to take away from all of it. Um, for several years, there's been much talk at Third Rock Grid that we, as a community, should try to form some sort of grid owners association to provide a means for grid owners to share ideas, knowledge, and to provide a forum we can all interact on a level of friendship instead of always as competitors. My visits to the other grids and talks with the owners have solidified the desire of the other grids to have something like this as well. A few weeks back, I proposed the idea of a grid owners association of sorts, and Marie at Hypergrid decided to write a story about it. My original idea was to test the waters to see what kind of interest there might be about forming an organization like this. And the response was pretty good. We got 18 grids uh, indicating they were interested in supporting such an organization. And uh, Justin from the developers indicated he would, he would try to support it as well. But interestingly enough, though, it seems that the entire community wants to be a part of an organization like this. So it seems the original idea somewhat morphed into a more general open sim community organization now. Um, based on the responses, myself, Mark Wiseman, Maria, and Alan Tupper have started putting together the initial startup phase of an organization. We are so, so far calling this organization Open Sim United, and we've created a website that you can visit and join, and that's at opensimunited.com. And our hopes are that this organization will provide tools to grid owners, open sim developers, viewer developers, general users, and vendors of the open sim community. We believe that the community is now large enough that we can successfully run crowdfunding campaigns to help raise money to fix bugs, develop new features, or extend existing features. The idea is that we pick the top things, if you will, bug fixes, features, etc., that seem to be the most wanted. And we start talking to the developers about whether or not they think the project is a good fit. If they determine it's a good fit and the project's doable, then we'll start collecting pledge promises from the community. The pledge amount then would become the bounty, if you will, placed on this most wanted item. Any developer, current or future, could then submit code for review if it's deemed acceptable, then the code would get rolled back into the co uh, core code, and we'd all then benefit from the efforts. And we could do this over and over and over again, multiple times, for any, any feature, any bug, uh, any extension. Um, the organization could also provide tools to the community. Uh, maybe we could have a central repository for all the content that's been given to the community. Maybe we could have a directory of worlds, a community uh, events calendar, the list could go on and on and on. Really, the possibilities are endless. Our hopes are, though, that this organization will be completely open and transparent. It will be made up of all segments of the community and would remain completely unbiased and run by the community. Just to be clear, the proposal here is for an organization to be formed by the community for the community. It should be one that's never biased towards any individual or group and it should always work for the good of the community as a whole. Any projects or work developed by this organization should be considered the property of the community. I'll step back now and hand things back over to Marie, and we can hear from the others. Thank you all for your time. It was great being here. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, for that introduction. Next, I would like to, to introduce you to Alan Tupper, another member of the new association's kickoff team. Alan is a transmedia content creator focusing on animation and independent game development. He writes about the metaverse from both a developer and an user perspective on the blog Meta Pundit. In his free time, Alan is spearheading an effort to explore the potential of cryptocurrencies within the hypergrid. Alan, how will this association benefit regular users of OpenSim? Thank you for the question, Maria. So we're a pretty passionate community and we're in this software almost every day and we all know we all have our list we all have our list of things gee i really wish we could do x gee i really wish you know this feature was more like that and this isn't something that's limited to just 
grid owners. This isn't just limited to you know content creators. This is everyone, and everyone has their features. And what this association has the power to do is to bring us all together as a community and say, yes, that is worth pursuing. Let's get together. Let's chip in whatever we can chip in and get this thing done. And uh, we got a lot of favorite responses was pretty succinct and it was get things done. So I think that in a, a nutshell is what um, we should be uh, aiming for and what, what I think it can, uh, what it can offer regular users. Uh, some uh, users have expressed a few concerns about this organization, um, that this would be a short circuit the normal development process or, or uh, you know, push OpenSIM maybe in a, in a different direction. Um, how do you respond to these concerns? I mean, yeah, those those are definitely some common concerns. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, some concerns that, you know, it, it'll be just sort of a way for, you know, closed grids to essentially strong arm the developers and to say, hey, you know, we have this pet feature, uh, you know, kind of do a smash and grab and then go back to their closed grids and leave everyone else kind of in the dark. Um, and that we won't li give, you know, everyday community users a, a voice. Um, our answer to that is, like, like Terry was saying earlier, we truly believe that everything that the com that the association will do and will will produce will be the property of the community, and we really, really want to invite the community into every step along this process. Whether that's the initial discussion phase what, that we're in right now during the kickoff phase of how this organization should be structured, uh, all the way to the the day to day decisions and deliberations on should this be a, a future that we pursue or should we um, you know, fund this. Uh, it's, we want to keep this as absolutely open and transparent as possible and we don't want to be shutting people out. Uh, you, this is supposed to be a community organization. Uh, some of the things that you're talking about are going to cost money. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your fundraising plans? Absolutely. So the, we have two main uh, methods that we're considering for fundraising, and we're considering a combination of both. Uh, first and foremost, we are considering uh, for raising money for projects, doing it in a uh, crowdfunding method. Uh, platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and even Patreon have shown that it's uh, more than feasible to, when you have a concrete project and a group of people who are passionate about seeing that project through, it is more than possible to have a group of people come together and, and raise funds for that. Now that works great for individual projects. For uh, projects where, uh, or not, not even projects, but for the day-to-day -day operations of the organization, uh, we are considering the possibility of introducing a, a paid membership model. And now that will not really provide any, uh, we, we aren't considering it offering too much in the way of special access. We Again, we're very early in this discussion and we want community input on that. Uh, but the idea is that, that, that the funds from a, a paid membership would go to run the day-to-day -day, uh, costs of the organization, whether that's you know having some people working part-time or even full-time if this gets large enough to actually do the administrative work uh, and to keep the lights running, as it were. Um, finally, I'd like to introduce Mark Wiseman, who is also helping this organization get off the ground. Mark is the CEO of Digital Worlds Group, which provides services for private and commercial grids. He has a strong passion for 3D historical recreations and for using Open Simulator for niche applications like real estate previews and language and subject specific grids. He currently lives and works in the Netherlands and he offers online marketing consulting services to companies aiming to incorporate the 3D web into existing and new marketing channels. Mark, could you tell us about some of the practical realities of getting an organization like this off the ground? Hi Maria, thank you. Yes, um, well the way we get an organization like this off the ground um, in our community, which is open source 
based and wants to be open and transparent in its nature um, is to set up the organization together with the entire community. And the way we do this is we define a kickoff team, which is this four people here, because in the audience is uh, Nick Swart, an educator from the Netherlands who has also joined the team. And um, we have a number of a number of other people who have uh, pledged their support as we go forward during this phase. Um, and where you want to be at the end of this phase is to have a, orga a non-profit organization, most probably, um, which has gone through the motions of together with the community defining, so what are our founding, founding principles? Um, next step, what, what is it we want as a community on large? Um, so as, as well for the software development as for the community ends of it, and uh, Alan has been uh, guiding, doing the questionnaire uh, online. I think we had 46, 48 responses, Alan? Uh, I think 42 right now, but I think it, it, it keeps right. growing, and it's, I think it's still open, so we're, we're still um, taking input. Right, and we're taking input in, on that until the end of uh, November, at least. Um, and what we're seeing in that already is that there are demands from the community for different types of activities which a non-profit organization could do. One of these activities is the crowdfunding. Um, but we won't know that yet until we've done our inventory, which we'll do with the entire community. Um, I'll have to look at my slide for a moment. So w w once, once the community has come back and said, right, we like these activity plans, please go and sort them out, we're going to have to figure out the legal aspects of this organization, get it properly registered. I think the next step after that is, uh, and we've looked at Apache, how Apache does this and Mozilla does this and other open source organizations, they tend to have a board which is elected by the community, um, which consists of... Um, uh, a number of people who are strong in the field and have, have a long-standing experience. They're a non-executive and they appoint a management team for a period of a year. And that management team is the team which goes back to the founding principles and the activity plans which have been decided on and actually act executes them. At that point, this kickoff phase obviously ends and it becomes an operational organization. Um, and in that, what one of the things they could be doing, so when I say activity plans, very often so far we've spoken about the uh, crowdfunding end of things. So here's, here's a, a small example of how that, how that plan would work and it would be a, a separate, if you want, department within the organization which runs this activity and it goes through month, uh, three monthly cycles, could be six months, in which you go to the community, you inventory all the requests which are out there and what that will tell you is what are the demands in the market for uh, the end users? What is it the end users want? Which items have the highest market value when you add them to the product? So you do that for a couple of weeks and you end up with this top 10 list of things which end users want. We take that to the core developers, to the uh, additional developers, and really we take it to any developer who um, uh, could develop for OpenSIM. And we say, all right, come up with a functional design for this. Come up with your price for it. And then if these plans check out, and this is why we need some developers to be in this management team, really, um, you take it to the crowdfunding stage. And we're talking about items which could cost $200, bucks to, $200 to fix or up to 2000 The community that has asked for these items is now in the position to actually crowdfund these items. You get your crowdfunding in, the organization takes care of the financials of it, um, the developer goes, or the development team, goes and develops their, their um, proposal, delivers it to the repository and rinse and repeat. So that that's in a nutshell the way you get from your kickoff phase all the way to operational and then how you could consistently repeat, uh, repeat these activity plans. So you, you're going to need some support from the core open some developers for this. So far, what's been the feedback that you've heard? Um, I'm going to ha hand that one off to, to Terry because Terry's been in contact with the developers um, so far. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, basically, we've we've received not much response from the developers. Justin has been the only one to 
to any up for, uh, any information, and he simply indicated that he would try his best to support uh, our efforts. But uh, uh, as as everyone knows, his his uh, schedule is rather busy at times, and therefore his participation might be limited. So so we're open to any of the developers that might want to uh, get in touch with us or become a part of this because. Uh, we know moving forward they're going to be a big, big uh, uh, a part of this. Uh, without them, really, uh, it's going to be really tough for us to, to do anything uh, and move forward. Uh, so, uh, again, like I said, not much interest yet, but uh, we welcome anybody that might want to step up to the plate and, and uh, help us out in that area. Okay, and this might be a little repetitive, but I've seen it asked uh, quite a few times. Can anyone join this organization, or is it just for the big grid owners? Ah, um, well, here's a philosophical question. What is a grid owner? Um, we, we tend to think of the grid owners as the uh, people who commercially run the top 20, 30 grids out there. Um, but an educator who runs a grid on their own uh, network in a school is, is a grid owner, essentially. So it becomes very hard to make a distinction between grid owners and grid owners. So anyone out there using the platform um, is, 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 should be a member of this organization because you need your, um, your end users to give you the input, what, what is requested from the market. Um, and they all they need these specialized fields where people are grid owners, so in education, um, uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, b b business applications, education, um, uh, uh, language learning is an interesting one there. So y you need to get all these all these inputs. So everybody is a member. It's not just commercial grid owners. And what about grids that are running on different versions of OpenSIM or that have their own uh, own technology that they're using? Uh, I um, can take that one. Yeah. Uh, so, in the, the survey, we, we have definitely seen some interest for that. Uh, I think we still need to reach out to the, the platforms uh, to, to find out if they're truly interested. Personally, I would love to see it, uh, but I think we should still see. I think we lost think you we there lost for the, a I'll second. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> but it sounded like your answer was yes. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I just came from moderating a panel on content protection in OpenSIM, so this is actually top of my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Will this organization do anything to help protect or help improve the state of content protection in OpenSIM? Uh, well, the real answer to that question is, does the community want that? Because if you go through your cycles and you keep asking your community, what do you want? And this floats to the top, then, um, then that is the thing you want to work on. What I would imagine is uh, c content protection is not just about uh, technology wise protecting the content, but also about how do you handle people who kind of break your laws and uh, do the thieving and so forth. Um, so within the organization, you could have an activity, a group, which focuses on, on these particular issues. But it's down, to the, it's down to the community whether or not they want that activity inside the organization, which is what you discover during your kickoff phase. Um, one of the uh, problems I think that some of the grids have is that they're competing amongst each other for a small number of users. Will this organization do, uh, be doing any big joint efforts to promote OpenSIM beyond this existing user base to the more general public? I think so, yes. Uh, I think that that's going to be, uh, it's something that the community has definitely shown interest in, and I think it's something that we should definitely push forward on. That being said, I believe that a great way to do that is to uh, really support some strong technological developments uh, to make the platform intrinsically exciting and ex uh, intrinsically capable of, of spreading itself. We're still you know, right now, relatively still in the Second Life model, so saying it's like Second Life, but, you know, free hasn't quite been the, the selling argument yet, so I, I think, yes, we can, we can help with that. 
I add something something to that as well. I think that uh, uh, it would also be a, a good thing or a, a potential uh, reward that uh, the grids could all join into maybe an advertising co-op of sorts. It's just an idea. And uh, we could then develop on uh, maybe some of the pricier uh, places to advertise and share that. More like uh, maybe we could uh, do a, uh, a series of banners that might be Third Rock Grid for one. Uh, maybe it's uh, Metropolis Grid for another. Maybe it's Avi Worlds for another, uh, etc. But basically let everybody chip in a banner and maybe uh, uh, somehow come up with a way to give the, each banner owner an equal share of the advertising on a platform that may be too pricey for an individual grid to advertise on their own. That's just one of the ideas that we could do as well. Uh, one of the things that I hear uh, from uh, my readers is that it's hard to learn how to get started to yeah. run a grid. Will your organization help people get started, provide mentoring or other support, or would you rather not have the competition? I think absolutely we, we should do what we can to improve the new user experience. Um, and uh, if uh, that boils down to helping other groups get started, uh, you know, heading in the same direction, I think the more the merrier, personally. I, I agree with that. I think, I think that for, the, for the, the, to go forwards, we want more and more adoption of OpenSIM. Um, and will the organization, organization help people get started with new grids? Well, I think what we should be doing is um, making the startup experience easier. Um, and not per se help out people by hand, but where, where are our tools, where are our simple wikis which explain it, where are our technological tools which make it simple to set it up within three clicks. Um, uh, I, I think this organization should be focusing on that because I think it should also be focusing on the market placement of the platform as a whole and adoptability of it is, is key there. And uh, finally, before we uh, before we start going through the audience questions, uh, I'd like to know if the three of you can talk to us about what are your most wanted features for OpenSIM development that you're hoping to see accomplished through the through this uh, organization? Well, I'm I'm with 99% of the population, which is I want a web viewer, please. <laughs> That's that's my main thing. I, I, as a grid owner, would second that that opinion, but also border crossings would be a second, or possibly even the primary concern for myself. Uh, as someone who has not really been really affiliated with any one grid and who is really excited by the hypergrid, I would love to see more development on that. I would love to see uh, more documentation uh, on on both the protocols and. Uh, working on really making the, the hypergrid, not only just the, the technical aspects, but also the social and economic aspects, really solid so that this can be, be only the foundation of where we can grow to. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a question from the audience. Um, your organization plans to, uh, is considering having a paid membership model. Does that mean that you will be creating an official nonprofit uh, or organization to manage that? Yes, it, it does indeed. Uh, we, we will have to. Uh, this this organisation has to be incredibly transparent on what it does. And why would you want a paid membership model? Well, first off, you want to have an officially registered organisation, which takes cash to actually do that. So there's there's going to be costs with running the organisation. That sort of depends on how heavy you make what the organisation has to do. And then there's costs within these individual activities which show up. Um, uh, so, so yes, it will be an o official organization. Well, what country will you be based in? That's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, <laughs> <that's the point. laughs> oh, I, we're we're I, talking actually, about that. We're talking about that. Sorry I, to pop that on you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. And, and what you'll see is if you, while we're in the kick, kickoff phase on the slide, I actually, we are here, is we're actually before we've actually done anything. Um, so which country we were based in, the first thing the kickoff team will do is create a process plan for going through the kickoff phase. 
and in that these questions will have to be answered. But um, uh, no, I and I don't know. I'm not quite sure if I have a particular preference either. It's global. I myself don't have a particular preference, uh, and really, I guess we should explore uh, the advantages and disadvantages that each country uh, would would offer the the organization, um, right. and go from there. The good thing is this has been done before by um, by other software groups, so there are models out there we can look at. Uh, there already is a nonprofit organization for open sim, the Overt Foundation. Uh, oh. Why not uh, use their infrastructure? Uh, that's that's a good question. Uh, I, from my understanding of the Overt uh, Foundation, it primarily exists to be a a holder of the the IP of of OpenSim to keep that as as a, a legal vehicle to make sure that uh, all those contributions stay um, stay open source in, per, in perpetuity. Uh, trying to kind of latch onto them and and try to expand them it may be too much to ask of them. And I I think at least on from my perspective, starting up uh, OpenSim United. And then, if it turns out down the line that you know we want to merge with Overt, then so be it. But I think right now we shouldn't try to bog down Overt with our with our idea, this bold experiment of trying to create a community-driven uh, organization. Uh, one of the members of the audience suggested that being inside the European Union could provide a lot of European funding, which also reminded me that there is. Um, funding on the table for possibil for the possibility of a web viewer through the Real Extend project. Right. Right. Is that right. something you guys would consider? Yes, most definitely. Um, I already work in the e I work in the EU and when you have cross country initiatives, um, the central EU is quite happy to, to hand out money for that. Um, so yes, if you have the organization set up in Europe um, there is a bigger chance of getting hold of that, but there, there are there are funds around the planet which are worth looking into. Um, another audience member was just at the viewer development panel, and one of the things they mentioned was the need for standards, a sort of W three C for open sim grids. This right. particular organization, you guys, sound like an ideal place to create that. Would you agree? And also, I would strongly suggest inviting the viewer makers to join your organization, says. Yeah, I, I well, think I, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, yes, they're all welcome. Come to the website to register. Uh, yeah, we, we, <laughs> absolutely, we absolutely want viewer developers. I think uh, uh, have just, just the example of, of, of Diva and uh, the, the OnLook viewer, that's an example of what can be accomplished with when, when you have a, a, a full knowledge of what's going on on the simulator side and the viewer side. So the more that we can get there to be some synchronicity between the viewer developers and the simulator developers, get them on the same page with standards and by having them in, invo involved in the same conversations together so we can work together to solve these problems, the better. So absolutely, they're invited. Uh, the previous question, by the way, was from Raymond, Raymond Ben. Uh, the next question is from Douglas Maxwell of the Moses Grid, which is the, the military grid, and he says, I have offered funding to the Overt Foundation for fi fixing bugs and so on, and was turned down. Would you guys have a problem with accepting money from the U.S. military? I would say uh, definitely not, but uh, just be aware that uh, the organization, uh, did, uh, we're, we're wanting to make sure that any projects that we work on, that that code gets uh contributed back into the core of OpenSim. So as long as they're okay with it being uh, uh, open sourced and available to the rest of the community, most definitely. As, as, as we said earlier, any, anyone who uses OpenSim is a user and is therefore welcome to contribute in which way they do. Oh, fantastic. Uh, that sounds really, really optimistic. Um, so, uh, uh, if uh, anybody has any uh, follow-up questions, this is your chance to ask them. Meanwhile, um, do uh, do the three of you have any closing remarks? Um, um, yes. Well, I, go ahead, Alan. No, go ahead. 
Uh, my, my only closing remark is uh, pl please come and register on the website and be part of this process. Because without the community out there, um, this doesn't fly. That was pretty much what I was going to say. This is something that we're trying to form for the community, by the community. And we absolutely want your, your input. We want your participation. We want your ideas. And you, know, you are the future of OpenSim. So we want you to be a part of this organization. Well, thank you, Terry, Alan, and Mark for a terrific presentation. This concludes the first day of the second annual Open Simulator Community Conference 2014. Though the conference programming has ended for the day, Littlefield Grid is hosting a special event this evening at 8 p.m. Pacific at the Speak Easy Dance Club, and we encourage our attendees in world and on the web to visit Littlefield for fun and post-conference discussions. You can hypergrid teleport to the event with your conference avatar, or for more information, see the conference program at conference.opensimulator.org. We'd like to thank our audience in world and on the web, and our speakers, staff, and volunteers for a terrific first day of the conference. We will begin tomorrow at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the keynote regions with an exciting keynote address from Steve Laval from Oculus Rift, who will talk about the race to bring virtual reality to a mainstream audience. We hope to see you there.